Hi, David Campanile here, owner of Campanile Law, located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate. Today's topic is going to be five ways to avoid probate that do not include a, a trust. But before we dive into this topic, if you have any questions pertaining to estate planning or probate and you want to schedule your free strategy session over the phone with me, you can contact me at njestateattorney.com or above or below is a direct link to my calendar where you can schedule a day and time that works best for you. So five ways uh, to avoid probate that do not include a revocable living trust. So avoiding probate, let's just uh, get pro uh, another definition of probate. It is the transfer of property from one individual to another at the time of passing. So let's break these down a little bit. Um, so the first uh, way, there are five, there could be more, I thought about five. The first way, at least in the state of New Jersey, it does not work in the state of New Jersey. But I thought I'd give it to you anyway, because four just sounded like a weird number, but five. So this is known as a transfer on death deed. Now, what does this do? Basically, what you would do is you would go to, uh, you would record a deed, you would create a deed that says, look, when I die, or when the owners of this property die, we're transferring this property to whomever you choose. You'd record the deed. When the last original owner passes, the people, the beneficiaries would go, or the new people would go to um, uh, records, uh, the county clerk with, uh, where the property records are stored with your death certificate. And then magically everybody, that deed that you created would take over. However, again, in the state of New Jersey, this does not work. New Jersey doesn't honor these. The second way is um, called joint tenants with right of survivorship. So you'll see this a lot when it comes to real estate transactions or real estate deeds. They tend to be written this way. Um, so uh, what what is this? It's basically when two people or more or multiple people um, are placed on a property or a bank account uh, or any type of account. When one dies, basically, the other person or people named on it absorb everything. So, for example, this is actually how my deed is written on the house, uh, on my house. So, if I pass, my wife would absorb everything and she would become the sole owner of the property. Um, so you also see this sometimes with bank accounts where people who don't want to do a power of attorney name a child um, or someone to help them with their bank account um, to manage it. So they have signing power. And then when that individual dies, the person whose name is on the account takes over. Um, but then you see some issues, a lot of issues with this because, you know, the person who passed wanted it to go to multiple people. But now it's only going to that one person and that one person knows that will learn that they don't have to give that money out. It's theirs. The third way is called a transfer on death designation. Um, so what does this mean? What you're going to do is you usually use this for your bank accounts. Uh, and what you're doing basically is you're going to the bank. They have their forms. They're pretty simple to fill out. And you say basically on this form, when I die, I want John... John Smith to take over this bank account. When you die, John Smith, who's your beneficiary, would take your death certificate, go to the bank, show him the death certificate, and it would become John Smith's bank account now. Um, this is uh, a, another good way to, to avoid probate, um, but usually what you'll see sometimes is people, um, well, no, that's more for the next one, but Yep, transfer on death um, designation. The fourth way is beneficiary designation. This is the fourth way to avoid probate without a revocable living trust. So, beneficiary designation. You can do this on your uh, financial accounts, your life insurance, your retirement accounts. Basically, what you're doing is you're naming a beneficiary to take this after you pass. You're going to fill out those forms with your banking institution or whomever your uh, financial institution is that holds these accounts. And you're going to say, again, I'm transferring, I'm naming uh, 
uh, Joe Blow to take this account. After I pass, you pass, Joe Blow walks in, gives him the death certificate, and they go, okay, this is yours, what do you want to do with it? Um, the issue here is people think they've done everything and then they forget about one or two accounts and it just blows up uh, everything and then they do need to do the probate to transfer the remaining accounts. The last way, which is probably my least favorite way of doing it, I mean, I can't like number one, which is the transfer on death deed because we don't allow it in the state of New Jersey. But um, the uh, it's gifting. And what, um, basically what this is, is you're giving an asset before you die to somebody else. Um, and uh, I have some issues with this because uh, there's two downsides. If you need the asset, you can't get it back because it's gone. You literally gave it to somebody else and said, I don't want this anymore. Or I don't need this anymore. It is yours. The other thing is you lose the step up basis to the heirs. And what do I mean by the step up basis is this is a tax basis, uh, which says, you know, if you own a piece of property, let's say you bought a home, I don't know, 50 years ago and you paid, I don't know, $50,000 for the home. And now, you know, the home is valued at a million dollars. I know, right? 50 years, you think about it, that's a big jump, but it happens. You see it a lot where family people live in their same house that they it's their first home they bought and they never moved. But 50 years of all that going up in price, the heirs would inherit the home at a million dollars and not have to per not have to pay the step up the tax on it. So if you transfer the property to them, they're going to lose that and you know, potentially there's a tax of, you know, upwards of 20% so you do the math, 950 uh, in value, what is that? $190,000 maybe, a hundred, wait, yeah, $190,000 in taxes that are gonna have to be paid. Doesn't seem really worth it to me. Um, this is why I really don't like gifting as much. But there you go, five ways, count it, five. Transfer on death deed not allowed in New Jersey. Joint tenants with rights of survivorship transfer on death designation, beneficiary designation, and gifting. Those are your five ways to avoid probate without a revocable living trust. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. We're putting out content daily about estate planning. You're missing out on some great informational stuff. If you know somebody who's contemplating estate planning or probate, share this video with them. Tell them you were thinking about that. If you have any questions pertaining to this topic or any other topics in estate planning or probate and you want to schedule a strategy session for free over the phone with me, you can contact me at njestateattorney.com or above or below is a direct link to my calendar where you could schedule a day and time that works best for you. As always, my name is David Campanile. I'm the owner of Campanile Law located in the state of New Jersey. We handle estate planning and probate.